In 1994, as Chelsea welcomed a new academy player who had come from West Ham and previously played at his very comprehensive school with the likes of Jermaine Defoe and Lily King to play in a midfield role, they would ask him to play as centre-back as there were no players available for that position. He would shine so much at this role that they would give him a professional contract only two years later. Next to the X, he would sign his name, John Terry. Despite this, he would only debut in 1998 and would only take part in 16 matches for Chelsea over his first two seasons, which would lead him to get loaned out to Nottingham Forest. As he came back, his rise to notoriety would be incredible. After a phenomenal season displaying how age is not necessarily correlated to class on the pitch, his no-nonsense disarming would make him Chelsea Player of the Year at just 20 years of age. Over the next season, his partnership with Marcel Desailly would make Chelsea's defense one of the most impenetrable at the time, and with John Terry becoming more and more of a symbol for the club, he would wear his prized captain armband for the first time that season. He would stay very solid in the team as they fought for a top spot in the Premier League, but his first years would show in him something that still haunts his legacy to this day. To put it in short, Terry had a way about him that constantly got him in trouble, from getting banned from the national team, for getting into a fight at a nightclub, to being fined for arresting families who grieved their relatives who passed away on 9-11. John Terry constantly made headlines. During the summer, he would take part in the Euro 2004, his first competitive tournament, where despite converting his penalty, he would see England go out in the quarterfinals to Portugal. Regardless, the decisive moment in his career would come in 2004, following Roman Abramovich's purchase of the London club and world record signing coach at the time Jose Mourinho, who had just won the UEFA Champions League with FC Porto, would come to be the new manager of the club and with him he would bring a few new players, including Ricardo Carvalho. It would be nearly impossible to talk about John Terry without explaining how important Carvalho would be for him. The duo would be incredibly strong. How strong, you ask? Well, that first season, the duo would help Chelsea finish first as Terry won his first Premier League title, but that would be a very reductive way of telling you how good they were, because Chelsea would only lose one match that season, and over the 38 matches they played, they would only concede 15 times, and that is 21 less goals conceded than second place Arsenal. Of course, this also means the all-time record clean sheets over a season, an astonishing 25 matches, which, by the way, for the sake of comparison, Arsenal only managed 16 that season, and the Sherry on the top, with 95 points, they would also be the all-time recordists. Internationally, they would go out in the semi-finals of the Champions League as they lost on minimal margin with Liverpool, despite being the favourites at the time. Regardless, Terry would win the award for UEFA Best Defender of the Year. The next season, Chelsea would once again win the Premier League with an impressive 91 points that would be the second highest up till that season, but still short of their previous one. Over the summer, the World Cup 2006 would come into play and once again he would go out on penalties as England lost out to Portugal. The next season they would finally run into some trouble as Manchester United would assemble one of the greatest teams in Europe and Chelsea despite maintaining the best defense in the league would not manage to get first place. This could be related to the absence of John Terry who faced injury problems in December and witnessed his team draw twice to Reading and Fulham over that period. Internationally they would once again lose the semi-finals of the Champions League as they faced Liverpool. The last few matches of the season would be filled with drama for John Terry, as he would get injured but managed to miraculously recover in time for the League Cup as he took the trophy home. The start of the 2007-2008 season would see Jose Mourinho move away from Chelsea after a series of disagreements with Abramovic. This left Terry in a difficult position as the captain of the team, but he persevered and Chelsea would go on to have a season that is hard to describe, as they wouldn't win any trophies but would not necessarily disappoint, as they would only finish two points behind the incredible 2008 Manchester United squad and make it not only to the final of the League Cup, but also their first ever appearance in a Champions League final, where they would once again Again, have to face their rivals Manchester United, who would be incredibly dominant and leave them with virtually no chance. Except in football, anything can happen and Chelsea would score with their only shot on target and manage to hold the tie. As they went into the penalty shootout, after 9 penalties had been taken, only one had been missed, giving the advantage to Chelsea. 
So they would call to their captain to seal the deal. John Terry would approach the penalty spot and as he prepared to shoot, it would slip and the ball would fly away, taking their faith away with it, as later Anelka would miss as well and Manchester United would be European champions. A night to forget for John Terry. Regardless, he would once again win UEFA Defender of the Year. The next season, despite only managing third place in the league, Chelsea would win the FA Cup and only be knocked out of the Champions League by eventual champions Barcelona, a match that would be involved in plenty of controversy, with Drogba famously describing the refereeing as a disgrace, as Terry would win his third UEFA Defender of the Year, regardless. As Manchester United lost their star player during the summer of 2009, Cristiano Ronaldo, Chelsea would have their best chance in years to earn back their title of Premier League champions and they would capitalize on it as they would beat Manchester United to the late stages of the season which would lead them to finish with a narrow one-point lead. To add to this comeback they would win the FA Cup once again. The next season would earn them no trophies and eventually be seen as a transitory season as it would simply serve as the bridge between the previous domestic double and the massive achievements that came in 2012. Despite this, we would get to see Wayne Bridge refuse to shake Terry's hand as he had had an affair with Wayne's girlfriend. As I had said, Terry attracted drama. The season would start in a sort of disappointing fashion, with Chelsea even going as far as only managing one win over six matches at a certain point. But through a mix of lucky draws and moments of individual brilliance, Chelsea were in the semi-finals of the Champions League, and they would face none other than Barcelona, and it was time for revenge. In the first hand, Drogba himself would give Chelsea the win, and in the second hand, Barcelona would get the lead, and as Terry would be sent off after an armful duel with Sanchez, Barcelona would double it. Chelsea Chelsea were desperate for a recovery, and with a magnificent lob, Ramirez would bring them back one goal before halftime. A second half of back and forth would come, and in the 92nd minute, Fernando Torres would get a long ball, and he would dribble Victor Valdez as he put the ball into the net and sealed Chelsea's place in the final of the Champions League. Sure, it felt nice to know that they had once again made it to a Champions League final, but Terry knew he couldn't be there to help. It must be one heartbreaking situation for a passionate captain. It would be even worse as Ivanovic, Meirelles and Ramirez would all fail to be present as well. You probably know the story already, but even though Terry wasn't there, I think I might as well mention it once more. Chelsea would face a superior Bayern squad who would be considered well superior. Most of the game would go by but by the 83rd minute Muller would get the lead. It seemed lost but Drogba would once again clutch up and get the draw before the final whistle. In extra time, She would save Robin's penalty and they would go into the shootout. Despite Mata missing the first penalty, no other player would miss and Chelsea would incredibly be crowned champions of Europe as Terry finally joined the team on the pitch to celebrate the award. The next season would see Terry fail to get the same playing time he used to get and would in a way be the start of the end. The year would also be memorable for his altercations with Anton Ferdinand as he would end up being charged for racist misconduct by the Federation though he was deemed innocent in court. Regardless, the highlight would come as Chelsea got third place in the Champions League group stage and dropped down to the Europa League. Chelsea would get a very lucky draw facing teams like FC Basel, Rubin Kazan and Stella Bucharest. Terry would not play the second leg of the semi-final and miss the final as well due to injury. Regardless, Chelsea would beat Benfica in the final and Terry would come onto the pitch to lift the trophy. For the next two seasons he would actually play more frequently than in 2012-2013 but only on the second of the two he would win trophies, namely the Premier League and League Cup and would still get voted into the League Team of the Year at 35 years of age. Two more seasons would take place before he would finally leave being subbed off for the last time on the 26th minute the number he wore on his shirt as he received the guard of honor from his teammates. He would play one last season at Aston Villa trying to help them to earn promotion to the first division. Sadly though he did get them to the final of the promotion playoffs but he would lose to Fulham and announce his retirement. One of the finest captains football has seen despite all the drama he created in his personal life. Terry is most likely the greatest Premier League defender of all time, though there are some other serious contenders. His partnership with Ricardo Carvalho was one of the finest we've seen. He never compromised, never left loose strings, his physical presence was imposing as they get and also taking into account his goal scoring ability, Terry was simply phenomenal. 
getting into our ranking system. First, marking, which as I just mentioned was an easy 10 out of 10. Secondly, tackling, so aggressive, so imposing in aerial duels, a 10 out of 10. Third, physicality, he had a very imposing physique, so a 9 out of 10. Fourth, his technical ability, probably the worst part of his game, he often was paired with a more technical centre-back to offset this issue, such as Ricardo Carvalho and Rio Ferdinand for the national team, though I think he improved with age, it's a 6 out of 10. Lastly, mentality. If he wasn't such a troublemaker, this would be close to a perfect score, still, it's an 8 out of 10. In terms of his legacy, first consistency and adaptability, never leaving England he never gave us a chance to prove his worth in another country but game to game he was very consistent as all the great defenders need to be but since at international level his career left a bit to be desired especially in his peak it's a 7 out of 10. Secondly, flair. Terry's style is often described as no nonsense defending so we can't get too high of a score here but you do get to see some amazing amazingly brutal tackles, so it's a 6 out of 10. Then, Trophy Cabinet, 3 UEFA Defender of the Year awards is very impressive, the same goes for 6 Premier Leagues, but with no other league title, only 1 Champions League seeming like not enough for his caliber of player, and no trophy with a national team, he can only get a 7 out of 10. Then longevity, though he did play for an incredible high number of seasons, his total of matches played isn't mind-blowingly high, still, that gets counterbalanced by the amount of those seasons that were played at a top club, he gets an 8 out of 10. Lastly, the icon factor, he is one of the most well-respected players in England, but in a worldwide scale, he can't compare to the likes of Maldini in terms of critical acclaim. He seems to be remembered as one of the greats and I don't think his legacy faded out as much as many other players, so he gets a 7 out of 10. This totals out to 78 out of 100, with one of the highest technical scores we've given so far, it shows how a player can dominate on the pitch without being masterfully skillful and focusing more on mentality and sheer physical dominance. An exceptional player indeed. This was John Terry's career in a video, I hope you enjoyed, if you did don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new. I really hope you enjoyed this, as you know, new video every week, so yeah, see you next time.